And the first question is to Chris uh, on Bacca Ledger, and it comes from uh, Srivatsan Sridhar. And the question is, do slots correspond to time intervals? If so, how is it possible for that blocks to refer to other blocks in the same slot? So no, uh, slots do not correspond to time intervals. Uh, we should uh, think about it the other way. Every block uh, carries a slot number if it is delivered by Babka with a slot number. And this is the only block that can be added to a slot in the log. The other uh, blocks that the picture showed were the blocks that can be committed along with this block and that the uncommitted blocks in the committed blocks causal history. Thank you. Uh, and the next question we have Alberto Solino for Dahlia. And the question is, upon failure on the second phase, the lock certificate, it can be the case that up to F honest nodes are locked on a certificate while the next leader does not learn. The next leader's proposal will does not extend that lock. When do the F nodes unlock their view on that certificate? Yeah, so I, I responded on the Slack channel and I'll try to repeat it here. Um, in the case where some nodes, uh, possibly honest nodes, are locked, but not all nodes uh, are locked, we know, you know, God looking at the system knows that there is no commit, but the next leader may not know it. So the leader has to wait um uh, the maximum network delay until it gets a quorum certificate from uh, the last field in this case if we are after gst then if f or even if a single node has a lock then it will receive it if we are before gst there is no guarantee so the leader might wait time out and not receive the highest load in this case, safety will never be uh, compromised, but liveness uh, is not guaranteed, as indeed, and indeed is the case always before GST. Liveness progress is not guaranteed. Eventually, either a leader will get the highest lock or a leader will uh, be able to form a quorum certificate without those nodes that remain locked and will form a higher QC. And those nodes will uh, either vote for a leader that gets their lock or for a leader that has a higher QC uh, and causes them to relinquish it. So there's really everything that I said so far is exactly as hot stuff. The only change is a simple if statement. The leader has to ask itself, do I have the highest QC from the immediately preceding view? If yes, or do I have messages for everybody? If yes, no reason to wait. If not, then the leader has to wait uh, until it uh, uh, um, uh, gets either the latest QC or not. That's the only change. All of, all of the liveness and how uh, locked protocols will enrich the logs is exactly unchanged from previous protocol. Thank you. Uh, and now a question for Christian from Sergey Federov. And the question is, how do you deal with fairness? For example, avoid the exclusion of distant replicas from influencing decisions? Mm, I'm not sure if I get the question correct. So distant replicas uh, still participate in the protocol one, just like they usually do. But um, remember that for um, yeah, achieving a quorum, um, we only need some progress making replicas on so most BFG protocols, usually N minus F. And um, the speed at which these quorums are formed uh, depends then only on the fastest N minus F replicas. And now, with this in mind, we showed that we can um, build some quorums in a way that they can be even somewhat smaller than that by weighting some replicas and um, then giving the fastest replicas more weights. And um, this, however, is not um, really related to fairness, in my opinion, because um, the replicas that are distant, or you could also say slow replicas, they are basically used to then still form fallback quorms in case that faster replicas would become unavailable. So this quorum, um, the, the, the waiting scheme still ensures progress in case that um, the T up to T replicas fail. And this can also be the T 
fastest replicas with the oh, okay does this make the fastest replicas target for an attack so um yes this can happen and um in our protocol we do have some principles where we basically have an um, um prediction model that tells the system how fast a quorum should be um how fast a quorum should be gathered and now if the prediction mismatches the actual speed of a quorum then the system can basically reconfigure the weights and give the weights to other replicas uh, or even abort the um the fast mode and go back to the conservative mode um the goal of our protocol is to not be slower than the conservative mode in any cases but if we can accelerate the system then um we should try to do it and um yeah well thank you christian i have a question for chris now and I was wondering, like, what techniques do you employ to minimize contention on sequence numbers, if any? So this is the most uh, work in progress part of uh, the paper. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, one can uh, have uh, even a simple round robin protocol to do that, but uh, this would not exclude uh, faulty nodes from trying to invoke broadcasts. Um, there is another simple solution, which is to have a, pro a process be the ticket master and uh, deterministically assign tickets to validators to invoke broadcast. Um, and then we can go more fancy about uh, how a process designs which tickets to assign to whom. Uh, they might even run a distributed protocol to do that. But, but this is, as I said, uh, it's work in progress. So. Thank you. So next question for Dahlia. Um, actually, these two questions. The first one is from Sergey Fedorov asking if odd stuff two is still partially, partially synchronous. I'm going to answer yes for you. <laughs> if you have a different answer, please correct me. And the other question is again from Alberto and is the following. Can you use a similar view change to have dual mode protocol that falls back to an async protocol? You're muted, Dahlia. Yeah, sorry. Yes, the answer is yes. This is basically an observation on every consensus protocol. Cool. You, know, every, you know, every leader-based consensus protocol. Thank you. Uh, and I have a question for Christian. So your contribution is very interesting. I was wondering, though, if you thought about kind of the inverse problem. So in this way, you're trying to concentrate, you know, the quorums on, you know, geographically dense locations so you can accelerate uh, or decrease the latency of consensus. However, as you have more and more concentrated quorums in a, a smaller and smaller geographical region, the resilience of your system also decreases. You can argue that on the limit, you can have all of these in the same data center, which makes the whole system very, you know, more vulnerable to, to uh, a failure. Uh, and the first problem is, what if you could study, you know, how to actually have quorums that are the most geographically dispersed as possible? You know, knowing that this is going to increase latency, but it might be interesting for some applications to increase overall resilience. Um, yeah, actually, I think um, you could do this in just a similar fashion, like our approach when, if you just basically reverse the prediction model and um, not take the optimum as the decision to reconfigure the system, but just um, yeah take the configuration that basically uh, gives you the worst system performance is probably the one where replicas are the most dispersed over the system uh, yeah, in the environment because um, the more dispersed they are, the higher the network links are. Um, so that's maybe an idea you could look at. Um, I hope this answered your question. Yeah, 